Living in the village of Winneba, Ghana, for a month has been a test of survival, especially for a spoiled Westerner like me. When I read travel guides, all I see is a list of countless warnings about what to avoid and what not to eat. Then there's my family and friends who ask, will you have clean food and water? Isn't there a civil war going on next door in Cote d'Ivoire? It was a perfect recipe for paranoia having the potential to ruin my experience immersed in the Ghanaian culture. I must admit, all these warnings got to me. For the first 48 hours in Ghana, I refused to eat anything but Luna bars that I had brought from the States and bottled water, which I drank with a straw for extra safety measures. But then I realized I gotta start taking advantage of everything Ghana has to offer. I figured, mind over matter. If I got sick, I'd deal with it. Most food in Ghana comes in a plastic bag. Water, pasta, porridge, you name it. Otherwise, you eat with your hands. As a diehard foodie, the highlight of my trip was the Ghanaian cuisine I was able to enjoy. My guidebook says to only drink bottled water, but on a student's budget, it was far too expensive. Instead, I relied on sachets, which are rectangular bags of water. You simply rip a corner off and drink from it. After I got over my Luna bar phase, I explored street food. My first dish was a kebab of mystery meat, curried and grilled to perfection. The cook said it was beef, but I'm positive it was goat. Most dinners were cooked at the hostel that I was staying at. This called for trips to the fishing market on Tuesdays, which was market day. Despite the warnings ringing in the back of my head telling me, only buy food that you can peel, avoid snacks sold in glass boxes, I bought and tried everything that I could get my hands on. Luckily, and surprisingly enough, I didn't get sick once throughout my entire trip. The ultimate food experience was eating scalding hot groundnut goat soup with my hands. Ghanaians pair this broth with a sticky starch called fufu made of cassava and yam. I enjoyed this dish so much that I went to this restaurant every other day. The cook and I became good friends. During the weekends, I'd explore places beyond Winneba such as Kakum National Rainforest, where I trekked across canopy rope walks 150 feet above the ground. Did I mention I'm terrified of heights? After a long day under the scorching African sun, I'd return home for a lovely outdoor shower under the stars. Plumbing in Ghana for hot water is essentially non-existent, so I'd have to dance around under the freezing water, regardless of the weather. Living on a prayer was the best decision I made. In retrospect, I never expected to gain so much from my naive audacity, but it made all the difference.